So far, I demonstrated for you a couple of cool Epiphone guitars from the 2021-2022 lineup. But what if you want an actual Gibson without spending a ton of money? You can buy this, the most affordable, the entry level of the Gibson Les Paul lineup. It is the 2021 Gibson Les Paul Tribute. Now let's do something interesting. If you watch my videos, you probably know that the intro sections is where I experiment combining two guitars, two amps, something like that. Basically me having fun. You see, this is called the Tribute because it's paying tribute to more expensive Gibson models. Unfortunately, I don't have a classic or a studio which would have been more appropriate, but I know this. In the neck position, there's a Gibson 490R pickup. Do you know what else has the same pickup? This 2015 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Obviously there are a lot of differences in the materials used for both guitars, but it's gonna be fun to compare the 490R in this with the 490R in the Tribute. I'm gonna play both of these in the intro and later in the demo. If you venture into Gibson's official website and explore the modern collection, you will find four main Les Paul guitars. And I mean those that have four knobs, bridge and a tailpiece, double humbuckers. For this video, we are excluding the Les Paul Special Tributes. They are more affordable, but they are not your typical Les Paul. Let's focus on these four. The Les Paul Modern, the Les Paul Classic, the Les Paul Studio and the Tribute. As of right now, the Les Paul Tribute is the most affordable Gibson Les Paul that you can buy from the official website. It is currently available in four main colors. The Satin Cherry Sunburst, the Satin Tobacco Burst, Satin Ice Tea and the one that I'm gonna demonstrate today for you, Satin Honey Burst. Gibson are claiming that these are a tribute to the master himself, Les Paul and the model. It is doing so with the help of a pair of a Gibson 49R and T humbucker pickups with Aonico 2 magnets. So pretty much it has all the bells and whistles that a Les Paul should have with a couple of modern twists, such as an ultra modern weight relief that make the Gibson Les Paul and they're calling it here a studio tribute, a pleasure to play. It is almost as light as a Gibson SG. It has some impressive specifications especially considering the price point. For example, it has an actual rosewood fingerboard. So even though it's affordable, it has all the bells and whistles that a Les Paul should have. What's even cooler is that Gibson even got Doug Aldrich to demonstrate the tribute on YouTube. I played this right here. Just like that. <laughs> Amazing, I can finally buy a Les Paul and say that I play exactly like Doug Aldrich. I'm just kidding of course. The big question is this. They claim that the Les Paul tribute captures the vibe, feel and tonality of traditional Les Pauls. So does it feel like an expensive Epiphone or does it feel like a cheap Gibson? Are you gonna have any doubts that you bought a real Gibson? And the answer is simple, no. 
it feels great, it feels amazing, actually I'm blown away by it. Let's start by checking out the official listing in Gibson website, then I'm gonna quickly walk you through the specs in the websites just so we have them documented here. Body, neck, hardware, electronics and the others. Now let's check them out in person. Here we are starting with the two-piece mahogany body with an ultra-modern weight relief. A two-piece plain maple top with satin nitrocellulose lacquer. A glued-in maple neck. Actual rosewood fingerboard, 24.75 inch scale length, 12 inch radius, 22 medium jumbo frets, trapezoid inlays. Graftech nut. The Gibson headstock with Gibson Deluxe tuners which are pretty nice. Then we have a set of Gibson 490R, 490T pickups. The traditional layout of the controls for a Les Paul, a three-way switch. Aluminium Nashville tunematic bridge and aluminium tailpiece which are right there. Here's a good look under the hood and you can clearly see the two-piece plain maple top. In this neck pickup cavity you see FH written, H probably stands for honey burst. Here's also the routing for the three-way switch that goes all the way to the electronics there. No QR stickers for the Gibson, you have the model written by hand LPTR00. Les Paul Tribute of course. That maple top is really light in color. Here's another look at it from this angle, you can see the hole for the three-way switch and the routing for it. The pickup starting with the neck position, Gibson 490R that was made in July of 2021. It has the Gibson USA laser etched logo on the bottom. A nickel cover with a cream pickup ring. Then there's this guy, the bridge pickup 490T made in July 2021, two days later than the other one. Gibson USA on the bottom, cream pickup ring again. Since I haven't shown you screws for a while now, everything is in order here, short for the front, long for the back pickup. Let's measure these puppies, shall we? The 490T at the bridge measures at 795. Switching over to the 490R at the neck, 774. Both pickups measure 392. I think these gold top hats are a perfect choice matching the Honeybird's finish, but they are a little bit close to the top and I have a hard time rotating them. I've seen a 2017 model with the thumb bleeders, which are a little bit easier. The three-way switch feels a little bit inconsistent when switching, but it's not too bad. I've seen some models without the poker chip as well, it looks good, after all check it out without the pick guard on it. We got a lightweight aluminium Nashville tunematic bridge and I mean lightweight. I will weigh it in a second. These are the new poles that are no longer adjusted by a flathead screwdriver. You adjust them by using an allen wrench or by using the thumb wheel. Then we got the lightweight aluminium tailpiece as well, advanced plating logo on the bottom. I told you these are lightweight and now I'm gonna prove it. Usually a bridge weighs around 54 or 5 grams and look at this 29 for the bridge. Tailpiece should be around 30 something. Yep, 34. These remind me of the tailpieces on the 58 and 59 standard reissues that I recently reviewed. They were extremely lightweight aluminium as well. The mahogany body has a two-piece plain maple top and a lacquer nitrocellulose finish. Check it out up close, I think it looks gorgeous without the pick guard. Speaking of, here it is, the cream colored pick guard that complements the pickup rings and the poker chip. Here's a side view, the tribute doesn't feature a binding, instead the top is just scraped. But check out the flaming going on on the mahogany body, pretty cool huh? The nitro finish definitely helps for that Gibson traditional feel. Now this next specification is the reason that a lot of people are passing on these Gibson tributes. But it's actually the thing I like about this guitar. It is a set neck construction but the neck is made out of maple. Which in my opinion feels and looks pretty damn cool combined with the mahogany body. Glued to this maple neck we have a thick piece of rosewood for the fingerboard. No binding surrounding it, white side dot inlays. Tiny medium jumbo frets, trapezoid perloid inlays. 24.75 inch scale length, 12 inch radius, pretty typical Les Paul stuff. 
For me personally, the maple neck is the reason I like this Les Paul traditional. I think it looks great with the mahogany body and the rosewood fingerboard. Anyway, moving on to the graph tech nut and this is one of the better ones that I've seen. Lately I've reviewed a lot of Epiphones so I'm used to seeing these chunky unfinished nuts but this one is actually okay. For the headstock we have a satin veneer on top of the maple. It looks fantastic with the Les Paul silk screen logo. Speaking of, the Gibson logo is golden silk screen as well, no pearloid for this one. Then there are the vintage deluxe tuners with keystone buttons which are a perfect combination with the honeyburst finish. A one-way adjustable truss rod that we see on all Gibsons. It is covered by this Gibson bell, two screws, two ply, tribute written on it. Inlay appreciation time. Check out the swirl on some of these inlays, especially the first one over here. You seen this? It's pretty nice. Hey, what do you know? Not only looks, but it measures like a perfect nut at 43 millimeters. The 12th fret is at 53 millimeters, perfect proportions here. The neck thickness is 21 millimeters at the first fret. I am impressed. Consistency. 24.5 at the 12th fret, which is pretty good as well. Not the thickest of bodies that I've seen, but it's definitely thick at 46 and a half millimeters. The fingerboard radius is 12 inch as expected. Hmm, first time for everything. I do not fully agree with the official Gibson specs. They say that the neck profile is rounded, but I'm seeing things more towards the flat side. This looks like a combination between rounded and flat, but anyway. Here's a look at that gorgeous back. Two pieces of mahogany seamed right here in the middle. Here's the difference in the wood grain. This one is going up, this one is straight. Satin nitrocellulose lacquer finish for the back as well, which I am a huge fan of. Always a nitro for me, please. Here's a peek in the three-way switch cavity all the way to the maple cap. The electronics compartment reveals that the mahogany is actually a little bit lighter in color but they couldn't leave it like this because it will not contrast too well with the top and the neck so they stained it and nitro finished it. Huge routing for the cables on this side and the output jack on this one. Now we have a PCB board in here, I've seen a similar one with the Gibson Classic model. I couldn't actually see it then because it was replaced but in here we have it with the Gibson pods and you see the quick connect system for the pickups and the output jack making things easier to swap in here. Besides the pots of course you cannot easily swap these. Some people are okay with these I guess but I've never met someone to say yes I definitely want a PCB board in my guitar. You see this one is a little bit noisy, it has some popping noises, it's on the noisy side of things. If this was my personal guitar I would probably get rid of the PCB board. And overall, I think this guitar can greatly benefit from some shielding around the three-way switch and the electronics compartment with some foil. Get rid of the board, shield it, and you got yourself a great guitar. This is what the covers for the electronic compartments look like. Gloss, no shielding on the bottom side. I would definitely shield these as well. I gotta compliment Gibson for the choice of screws for the three-way switch and electronics compartment. Black goes pretty well together with these covers and they've been done well. Besides these two for the truss rod, they have been a little bit crooked and hard to remove. This is what the output jack looks like, cream rectangular cover for it. Here's the back of that gorgeous maple neck and where the body meets the neck joint over here. I love it, I see some slight flaming here and there, no volute for it of course, and this is what the headstock looks like, you see the wings for it are a little lighter in color. Now here's a tip, this is a 2021 model that has a maple neck. If you absolutely must have the mahogany, 2017 and 18 models have mahogany necks. Anyway, let's have a closer look at that serial number, we have 21 and 203 is the day of the year. The rest is just the production number. I've taken out one of the tuners to weigh and show it to you. This is the Vintage Deluxe Tuner, PW written on the back, Gibson Deluxe logo on this side. Now let's weigh it with the nut, washer and screws. 31 grams. Now this is not brand new and it's 2021 model, but my friend never actually removed the factory strings, meaning that this can benefit from some oil and polish of the frets. 
There we go. I've applied some F1 fingerboard oil by Music Nomad and I'm gonna let it soak in a little bit. I've also polished the frets using Frein by Music Nomad. Yep, I like this brand. And I've used some Tune It paste for tuning stability on the nut. With all of this done, I'm gonna proceed and set up the guitar in E standard with hybrid slinky Ernie Balls. The Tribute has an ultra modern weight relief, so it's no surprise that it's light at 3500 grams or 7.73 pounds. Here's what the Gibson soft shell case looks like, and it's pretty cool. This is not a genuine leather, but it feels amazing. It has this sturdy padded handle and a huge pocket with the Gibson logo that you can store your cables, straps, etc. in. This thing is pretty easy to carry around, easier than a hard shell case and a perfect fit for the Les Paul Tribute. I'm actually surprised how good this thing is, the way the neck is supported, the way that it's fixed in place and you can check it out in here, it says that it's made in China, but good quality nonetheless. Here's what it looks like without the guitar in it and I'm actually curious about something. Yup, it fits a Strat in as well. Let's check out what the Gibson Accessories Kit includes. We have a baby follow but I'm gonna show this in a second because it's pretty funny. The Gibson cloth with the Gibson logo, some sort of a warning label, this product can expose you to chemicals blah blah blah, okay thank you for this information Heisenberg. Uh, then we have the tools for adjusting the truss rod and the bridge height, an Allen wrench. A Gibson owner manual which is included with most guitars. Some information about the woven in tough zipper that this soft shell case uses and they are actually pretty tough, I will demonstrate in a second. I mean look how massive these are, Gibson even thought about locking the soft shell case, you can use a padlock in these holes. Unfortunately you cannot lock these for the pocket here so don't put anything expensive in here. Next up we have the typical Gibson gold warranty, hasn't been filled, it's included with most Gibsons. Here's the most important thing, always make sure you keep this and don't lose it. This is the prick pack checklist that includes a lot of valuable information like the date that the guitar was made, July 29th of 2021, the model number, the serial number, the signature of people that inspected it and packed it. So keep this at all times. I've saved up the best for last, the baby follow. Cue the inception music. You have the honey burst, the follow of the honey burst, and in the photo of the honey burst, you have a photo of a honey burst. What? My mind is blown right now. Here's the bottom side of the soft shell case. You can carry it by hand or you can take out these straps and carry it like an actual backpack. You have to attach them using these and they are pretty solid. They are made out of metal so they are not gonna break like any of the plastic stuff. This feels well stitched as well so overall this is an amazing soft shell case gibson even thought about the padding on the strap so you don't get sweaty when you wear this on your back during the hot summer days but they didn't pad the back so eh, there we go i'm super happy with the soft shell case now let's hear the guitar <laughs>
opinion about the Gibson Les Paul tribute. I love it. I love this thing. It's super accessible for a lot of people. This is not expensive meaning for a Gibson. Yes, it's expensive if you're looking at it like an Epiphone. But here's the big question. Would I get the most expensive Epiphone like an Epiphone Les Paul Custom something like that or would I buy the tribute? Yeah, it's not the same price I know but I would definitely save up and buy the Les Paul Tribute. This guitar is easy to set up, plays nice, sounds amazing and it looks great and it has Gibson written on the headstock. The accessories that come with it, the soft shell case are absolutely fantastic. It has all the bells and whistles that a Les Paul and a Gibson should have. The other big question that I have is should you save up for the Les Paul Studio? It's $400 more and I have to review one of these to have the answer. For now I can tell you that I absolutely loved the Les Paul Tribute and I'm gonna recommend it to friends of mine that want an affordable Gibson Les Paul. <laughs> 